Okay, uh, for those, uh, for anybody that's new, uh, my name is Chris Ness. Um, I've been helping uh, Scott do some market reviews, market analysis, and uh, some shows here for him. Um, I think Scott's going to be back uh, this week um, for vacation in Australia. Um, I know he's going to be getting back to work there full throttle when he gets back, but uh, um, just wanted to do a kind of a quick market update um, tonight. Really, there's not much to update or anything that's changed. Um, we're kind of in a holding pattern here, and uh, for the most part, uh, the charts look pretty sick. Uh, not not going to try to sugarcoat it. Everything is uh, very very bearish um, from a technical standpoint. But uh, again, I I come from this uh, from a fundamental aspect and kind of a macro view, and um, I view the crypto space and asset class as a whole right now. Um, I liken it to, to where the internet and, and the dot-com uh, blow up was, you know, roughly around that 1996, you know, time frame. That's, that's really where we are. Uh, my, my biggest projects and, and coins and companies that, that I'm big on, uh, I, I really think we're, you know, I, I uh, basically use the example of we're, we're at the starting line or mile one of a 26 mile marathon. Uh, that's really where we're at. So, um, you know, I, I always tell people in the group and I, I tell people investing in this space, you know, don't, do not get caught up on the hourly and day to day movements. Um, you know, I, I don't even like to look at the charts uh, on a smaller time frame than a daily just because uh, I'm coming at this from a longer term view and uh, we're just very, very early in this space, so uh, be patient. Great things are coming. Um, with the ruling this last week on Ethereum, it wasn't an official statement. You know, it can go all the way to the courts um, on the official ruling, and I actually would be shocked or surprised if if uh, that's actually the case. But uh, we did have a, an SEC official last week. You know, finally clarify that uh, Ethereum is not a security. Um, I wanted to touch on that a little bit tonight. Um, as a lot of you know, I'm big on XRP. I'm big on Ripple. Um, I'm not going to get into to all the reasons why why I am. I've I've covered it pretty um, extensively, and I don't I don't need to go go back on that. I'm not here to try to convince anybody or um, you know shill or, or anything like that. But honestly, if, if XRP is labeled as security, it's really not going to be. A bad thing. Um, they actually paid a fine back in 2015 um, for a similar deal. Uh, they actually had a contract, and uh, as far as I know, I believe they still do with uh, the Department of Treasury, the United States Department of Treasury, um, and they were working with FinCEN, and uh, they were actually fined, I believe, seven hundred thousand dollars back in 2015 for for those exact claims. They paid that fine. Um, they changed some some wording in their um in their contracts and you know as far as i know you know the, the team and, and management that they have around them uh this is not stuff that they haven't thought about uh <laughs> you know um they're the people that that are in charge of of ripple labs and stuff um these aren't 20 some year old tech you know, tech nerds, as, as I like to call most most of the management teams for a lot of these other projects. I mean, these are uh, well well established people in in the financial sector. Um, much of them have worked in the regulatory uh, area before. Um, they have, you know, people of you know in the law department as well. I mean, uh, I, I I would be shocked that they haven't. You know, cross their T's and dotted their I's, but um, you know, a lot of people think, well, if it's labeled as security, it's it's going to be, you know, the the end of Ripple and XRP. No, <laughs> no, it's not. Um, you know, most of these exchanges, and I and I talk about it, you know, with with Bitrix, why I choose Bitrix here in the states. Um, you look at what Coinbase is doing. The exchanges that are going to be around are going to be compliant with the SEC, and a lot of people say, well. You know, crypto is a global, a global phenomena. It's it's worldwide. Why does it matter what the SEC thinks? Well, a lot of the laws that are in place around the world are strictly, literally, right off of what the SEC has put in place. And when Jay Clayton says, 
you know, we are the envy of the rest of the world when it comes to financial regulatory framework, he's absolutely true, right. I mean, they, the blueprint from the SEC is what really the rest of the world uses. And so that's why I believe it's, it's really important that the U.S. be the leader on this. They, they hit this head on, and I think they are. Um, I will be absolutely shocked, like I said, if we do not see um, the regulations put in place before the end of the year. And I actually believe we'll see something um, put forth before the fourth quarter. Um, and believe you me, these guys are filling their, I believe they're, they're dragging their feet because they're buying up what they want to buy before they put this stuff in place. Um, these guys are the most, uh, there's nobody more, more corrupt than the United States federal government, but that's, that's for another topic. Um, I've, I've talked about it briefly on, on why that's true, but, um, so anyways, I just, I just wanted to cover that a little bit. Um, I'm not here to get in an argument with everybody, you know, about XRP or Ripple and why I like it. And, you know, it, it's, uh, it's by far the most controversial coin out there. It's the most controversial, uh, project in, in the crypto space, but, uh, uh, a lot of the people that are invested in this space, um, they, they really don't even understand, uh, and, and being a Forex trader and an FX trader, um, you know, I, I'm very aware of what, what the current systems in place are and, and how, you know, the currency exchanges operate today and, and traditional markets operate. And, and it's, it's just a fact, a lot of the people that, uh, that are invested in this space don't don't even understand the current systems that are in place and, and the way currency flows and business transactions and, and swaps and all that stuff works um, to begin with. So uh, anyways, what I wanted to do tonight is just give a, give a brief update. Cause like I said, um, my, uh, my targets are still intact to the downside. Um, there's really nothing to um, tell me otherwise. Um, we'll get into the charts here and uh, I'll just kind of leave it up, leave it up to anybody that's watching. Um, if you have any questions, anything that you want me to cover specifically, um, I'd kind of like to just, you know, answer some of your questions. Um, you know, if you have any, but we'll, we'll go through, uh, Bitcoin here. Uh, as we know, Bitcoin is what drives the entire market still. Um, you can see here, I've got, you know, my main buying area, this is the weekly chart. Um, and, and still, I believe this is where we're headed. Uh, this hasn't changed for me. And so we'll start with the weekly here and you can see the weekly, the weekly candle for this past week, uh, literally just, uh, just closed here, um, 10 minutes ago. And what do we see? We see, um, our deepest close on, on a weekly candle here. Um, so far since, since we've started the, the crash or the retracement from, from all time highs. Um, this to me is a, is a very bearish indication uh, that we're going to continue. Um, now, again, you know, we can say that we've got support here and that is true. Um, we are sitting on, on what has been support. Uh, this little area here around 6,000. This has been uh, so far a, a good area of support. Uh, I don't think it's going to hold. I still think we are we are making our fifth wave um, completion correction pattern, um, and and I'll show you why here. Okay, so yeah, you know we've got we've got major support here, um, and as you can see, you know I've talked about this and we'll continue to talk about it because it's it's the truth right now. We have just nothing but declining volume um, ever since the since the all-time highs. Um, you know, a report came out last week. We we knew Tether had been being used to uh, to manipulate, you know, Bitcoin price up. Now we're being told, you know, that it's being used to, to be manipulated on the downside as well. Um, I, I was talking to, uh, to a buddy there the other day and I, you know, I told him, I said, a lot of the stuff that we're seeing in the crypto space is really um, a lot of what the crypto maximalists or, or vigilantes, um, you know, say that crypto is going to fix, and that's you know that's corruption and, and manipulation and and all that you know sort of stuff that that we know that the the governments, the politicians, the the banks, the institutions already do. 
we're seeing the same crap in this space. It's just a different different group of people that are controlling it. Uh, the whales. Um, we we see tether being printed out of thin air. You know, another hundred million dollars um, was printed out of thin air, I believe, on Thursday or Friday. Um, and if what they're saying is true, um, the the exchanges that are participating in this stuff, they will be shut down. I mean, they they may make make hay now and and uh, you know stick it to their their customers now, but. Uh, they won't be around, and, and uh, if they find the the people, these you know owners of these exchanges and stuff um, guilty, they're going to end up behind bars. Um, the fin- literally the the uh, <clears throat> sentencing in the financial sector is literally um, can be some of the harshest you know prison penalties there is, and far as far as anything goes, uh, these guys don't mess around and. Um, that's why I just, you know, I stay away from from most of these exchanges because I just don't trust them for the most part. You know, BitMEX is one of the, uh, really, I believe, the largest exchange um, out there right now in the world outside of, you know, the actual CBO, CBOE and CME futures um, for shorting Bitcoin. And uh, they, they're, there's already allegations and, and stories coming out about, you know, they, they're literally one of the most corrupt exchanges there is out there. Um, you know, wash trading, you know, taking both sides of the, the trade. Uh, there's just a lot of this stuff that goes on. And um, it's it's part of the it's part of the growing pains of, of being the early adopters in this. Uh, a lot of that crap will get weeded out over time. And, and uh, you know, when 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 TD Ameritrade comes online, you know, when when these major exchanges come online that we know are true and tried and trusted and they've been available for for a long time and and every other asset class um you know those those are the exchanges that you're going to want to be involved in but uh anyways um so getting back here we'll we'll go uh, down into the smaller time frames but just wanted to point out you know the weekly candle now has closed deeper um than any other candle so far and uh i just i expect this to get to continue if we go into the daily now <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, look at we're we're already starting to to turn over here. Um, I won't be shocked if if tomorrow when the U.S. session kicks in, this thing's just gonna gonna start to continue to melt down more. Um, yeah, and you can see, I mean, it's just volume is is literally non-existent. This eight EMA is just literally acting as support almost every day now. Um, for, for us to even create a new high, you know, we need to get above, basically a close above 6,900. Close at 6,900 would give us give us a new higher high. And then we're gonna be right back at this trend line, um, which is really acting as, as the trend line for resistance now. And then from there, you know, we need to get really a close above 78, 7,900 to, uh, to establish a, a new high. but. You can see on the daily we're we're making lower lows and honestly for for anybody out there that's shorting looking to short this market i'd be shorting on a break of six six thousand and i won't be shocked if we get there honestly in the middle of the night or at the u.s open tomorrow um i mean we're we're below the 200 eight is still below the 18 it's you know price can't even break above the eight um now I will say, if we do get a pump or a surge here, break out above this trend line, you know, get back to seven thousand, um, you know, now now we have kind of some small momentum, right? If we get to seven thousand, then we kind of pull back, bounce up off this trend line, and then we get above, you know, seventy eight hundred. Now now we've got something possibly unfolding. Um, I just don't think it's going to happen yet. I, I don't think we're going to, I believe we're going to fulfill. I think we're going to get down to a minimum 5,000. That will be the completion of the five wave correction pattern. That would take us down to the D extension of the uh, main major ABCD sequence back from all time high.
And I just I don't I don't believe that the the banks and the institutions want to want to buy Bitcoin even at sixty four hundred. I think uh, you know on the on the weekly chart the two hundred EMA is back here what thirty six hundred uh, yeah thirty six twenty five. I just, I believe we're gonna get down here farther. You know, people talk about where are we at in the emotional cycle. Um, we haven't seen panic yet. We haven't seen panic and capitulation as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, we're breaking, we're, we're, we've closed, we have now closed below these lows. This, this bar right here closed lower than the two previous lows. And as you can see, if we're, if we're already starting to round here, you know, panic's gonna come when we break 6,000 and we're gonna see a capitulation type move. Um, you know, people are saying, oh, we, we will never see Bitcoin at 3,000, 2,000 again. It's very possible. It's very possible and I, I think your your big money is going to be waiting down there. Now, I'm not saying it stays down there long. Um, we could have a very, very, very quick snapback once we get down there. In fact, I won't be shocked if that's what we see. Um, you know, I've talked about the, the break even on mining, um, you know, the kind of line in the sand around the world's 5,000 for China, which is the biggest, you know, mining operation in the world. You know, it's closer to that 4,500 area. You know, I can see us coming down here and having, having a quick, you know, a quick, quick spike down and then we just see a surge in volume, you know, and we we jump right back up and now now we may have our first wave of our of our new long-term five wave count that's going to take us back to all-time highs and, and possibly more um, you know I've, I've had a few people ask me where you know where should we set our buys or where are we looking to, to be at you know to for for me as a long-term investor I'm just continuing to buy every day We've got some. We've got mining going on. We're getting payouts daily. I'm continuing to buy what what I want to buy for the long term because, for me, if it takes two weeks, if it takes two months, if it honestly takes you know into next year, it doesn't matter to me. You know, uh, eToro, the eToro uh, exchange um, CEO, you know, the other day said selling cryptocurrency right now is like selling Apple in 2001. I couldn't couldn't agree with, agree more with him. Um, we're sitting at I believe two hundred and eighty billion dollars overall market cap today. Yep, two seventy eight. Um, we're headed to we're headed towards fifteen twenty five trillion. Um, now whether it takes five years, takes ten years, somewhere, you know I don't think it will. I think I think we're honestly going to see this happen in the next five years or less, possibly four. Um, you know, I, I keep saying we don't have to uh, go that far back to uh, to remember. You know, this move, this move right here. You know, we went from uh, thirty six hundred to twenty thousand in literally a span of uh, ninety days, hundred days. Um, when it when it kicks in, it's going to do the same thing. Um, but yeah, Jules, you asked, what about uh, what do I think about Binance? Um, I think I think Binance, uh, they're I mean they have become the biggest, biggest fastest exchange you know uh, exchange in the entire world. Um, I think they want to be uh, compliant. I think they definitely want to be um, an exchange that will that will be within the regu regulatory framework. Um, you know they have moved to Malta and they have. They have uh, flat out said they don't want to deal, you know, with the regulatory scrutiny scrutiny as much now. Um, you know, I think I think there are a lot of things Binance has done that I, you know, I don't I don't agree with. I think it's it's become a huge, massive kind of kind of pump and dump exchange as far as coins getting listed on there. But um, that that honestly happens with, with with pretty much every exchange. I mean, when we when we see a coin listed on an exchange. Um, you know, we see a, we see a, a dump there, a pump, pump right after the fact, and then a big dump right afterwards. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta remember guys, we're, we're living in a, we're living in a time in this space where, you know, there, there are factors like exchange listings that is a huge, 
a huge event for price. It has nothing to do whether the product is, is a working product or, or whether the project is even a good project. Um, that stuff that as this market matures and this asset class matures, that, that kind of stuff won't have any effect. You know, it's going to actually come down to um, our projects at what they say they are. Are they going to deliver on what they raised all this money based off of? You know, I mean, EOS is a, is a prime example. Um, they ran a year-long ICO, and we saw this thing balloon to like, what did I, EOS get up to 20 billion? Um, yeah, seven, 17 billion market cap um, before before they even you know launched their product and they went live over the weekend and uh, immediately had to shut down after after uh, mainnet went live because they still had more issues. Now I'm not saying that EOS isn't uh, going to eventually be um, you know what they what they are set out to do or what they're saying they're going to do but so much of this space is built on just absolute nothing but speculation and and you know promises from a white paper that they're going to deliver and do this this and this um you know so as this market matures it's going to be a lot less about well what exchange did we get listed on or what uh you know see coin just got listed on binance last week and we saw um you know, a big, big spike in, in Sia coin. In fact, you know, when I go to the hour chart, <clears throat> here it is. You know, jump from 1.1 cents all the way to almost 1.6. It was literally a 40, 40% jump, you know, on a listing uh, on the exchange. What has it done since then? Just dumped. You know, I actually like Sia coin long, long term. It's actually one of the, one of the coins that uh, we're mining. I think they have a, uh, original idea, you know, cloud, cloud, um, compute or cloud storage, you know, they want to, they want to compete with these, uh, these bigger cloud, um, storages like, like Google and, and stuff like that. Um, I actually, I actually like Sia coin. Um, I was invest, wasn't invested in it, um, kind of more heavily around, around the end of last year. Um, all I'm taking now is I'm taking the C coin that we're mining and selling it and buying the buying the other projects that, that I'm interested in long term, um, which is which is very few, uh, very few to be honest. But um, so, anyways, going forward, it's going to be more important to actually deliver on you know what you're telling people that you're going to do than than just being listed on an exchange. Um, but anyways, getting getting back to the Bitcoin chart here, so. We're definitely bearish on the weekly. The daily is telling me um, we're bearish. We've we've closed lower. We're we're still being held down by the eight. If I go to the four hour, yep, you know, showing me bearish. We have a small trend line here. I mean, this is really stretching it. Really small trend line here. We are making technically higher lows. We're also making lower highs. So, um, like I said, for us to to have any little bit of hope of, of bullish movement, we really need to get a close above 6,900. And then we're going to be met at this trend line. So we really need to break above the trend line. You know, get up here to like 7,800. Maybe come back down, test it, and then go but I don't see it. So on the four hour, I would say that we're bearish. And I don't ever look at anything less than a, than a four hour. But if I wanted to go down to the one hour, we can see that the, uh, the EMA is, is below the 18. So we've had a crossover to the downside. You know, we're bouncing off this trend line. But I mean, there's just a, to, to even say that we're bullish here. There's is is a stretch. Um, I don't even know if we have a head and shoulders pattern here. Yeah, not even. Do 
a small one right here. You know, kind of a funky one, but you know, maybe we get a break of that neckline that takes us up to 6,700. Um, I mean, we're we're just the charts are ugly. The charts are ugly, and I, I think it's going to get uglier. Um, yeah, I mean, even on a 15 minute, we're below everything. It's just it, it's ugly. Any way you want to look at it. <clears throat> but like I said, you know, I've been talking about this for for over two two three weeks. Scott has been saying it for months. Um, you know, ever since that down ABC sequence was formed on the daily, you know. I was not going to be shocked for, for price to get back down to 5000 and uh, I think that's where we're headed. Um, like I said, if we get, for, for some reason, an insane pump or uh, volume spike to, to get us over 6900 then the next would be 7900 you know, then we've, then we've maybe got some something brewing, you know, on a bigger time frame or on a bigger picture, but... <clears throat> So I'd be patient if uh, if you're waiting to get in, just be patient. Um, if you're looking to, to day trade on a, on a shorter time frame, now if you're if you're coming at this from a long term perspective, I think we're seeing some some great prices. I would I would uh, I wouldn't hesitate at all to to be buying some here, but save yourself to buy more on that on that bigger potential drop. Um, and, and what I like to tell people. Um, we're, we're looking to possibly put a, a bigger um, a bigger chunk of money in um, lower and I I've marked out you know on the XRP chart you know I want to be looking to add on a on a bigger scale down in here this 40 this 40 cents to, to 20 cent area um, I don't think we'll really get lower than this you know I think in here, you know, that 40 to 25 cent area. Um, <clears throat> yeah, somebody wanted me to look at the, the XRP chart. I mean, it's it's a lot of the same trash right now. It's uh, on a weekly. Um, you know, it's ugly. We haven't closed below. Um, we've actually had a on a weekly time frame. We have actually had a a lower close. So this is actually. Um, I, I talked about this in the in the group chat the other day. Um, if I go to the Bitcoin, the XRP Bitcoin chart, you know, we still, yeah. So here, you know, we're we're still holding. Yeah, so we're in between the 786 and the 618. You know, XRP against Bitcoin is is actually holding um, nicely when you when you think about it. Um, now it's not it's not doing so hot against the dollar, but we are actually still above this low, right? So XRP against Bitcoin is slowly beginning to get stronger. I mean, we see it right here. Bitcoin's closing lower, XRP's closing higher. And when I compare it to Bitcoin, you know, compared to where we were in relation to the all-time highs, we're holding it. We're holding a lot nicely. Um, we don't even have a 200 EMA on this because there isn't enough data. Um, we have crossed right below the the 18 again, but. Um, so anyways, as far as uh, XRP goes against Bitcoin, it is slowly beginning to get stronger. And uh, I've, I've said it, I'll say it again, I, I believe XRP will, will overtake Bitcoin as the number one. Um, you know, XRP's got some major catalysts coming up. SBI opening next month. Um, not to mention they're just what they're even 
setting out to do their were their real world use case um, I, I can go on and on and but I'm not going to but so just from a technical standpoint on the charts XRP we can see it plain as day um, you know I don't know if this is going to hold though this is the current kind of major a B up sequence sub a B on the on the daily um, 44 cents is actually the D extension from this major down AB sequence from the all time high. Uh, you know, I still think we can get down here, but currently right now we are we are holding, but if Bitcoin drops, we're gonna see a capitulation down. Um, I do believe, and I've said this, I believe the alts, once Bitcoin does finally peak out at the bottom, alts are going to recover. They're going to recover much, much faster. Um, Again, my, my favorite two, ZRX, you know, here, here, uh, here we can see ZRX. Look at ZRX's chart on the weekly. ZRX is even holding even higher on the weekly than XRP is. So this, this excites me a lot with, that, with ZRX. ZRX is another one, guys. This is a working product today. O OX protocol works today. Now we have actually come down into the to the one you know we have dropped below the one so this technically would invalidate this wave count however this this big uh wick here this was this was coinbase so they're um coinbase's ceo uh, uh i can't remember his name he came on he was coming on to msnbc and there there was a whole bunch of speculation about zrx being listed on coinbase at the time and there, and there, there still is and i actually believe that uh that ox will be listed on coinbase i think it's coming uh zrx is going to be to coinbase um i believe they're going to use their protocol system and i think that's what they're gearing up for with gdax pro um they're gearing up for for the institutional money i think they're gearing up for adding a lot more coins they're going to have to be to stay relevant especially with bitrix adding fiat and more and more exchanges adding direct fiat to their exchanges for coinbase to stay relevant on, on a uh, retail on the retail side they're going to have to to offer more investment options they just they're, they don't have any option but i believe their their long term is they're they're wanting to tailor themselves and more excuse me, more to the uh, institutional side, more than anything. But uh, so, so looking at the ZRX USD chart, you know, we have a, a lower, a higher low. And, and in relation to, to where we are, um, you know, if I actually take this FIB from the low where we started, you know, we're, we're in between the 618 and 786. So, you know this chart on a on a technical standpoint i like i like a lot you know if we take and uh, actually start what could potentially be the even bigger wave count you know we could be making wave two now and i've said this i i actually believe that zrx once it once this thing kicks in i think zrx is going to see ten dollars easily i think if a coinbase listing happens um you know, we could actually be seeing 25 plus on this thing, but um, that that's that's when this thing really kicks in those those price targets. Um, you know, this this could be definitely the start. You know, of a bigger bigger wave structure, which um, wouldn't surprise me at all, actually, but. Anyways, I, I actually think wave three is going to be way bigger than that once once this thing really kicks in. But so I like I like uh, how ZRX's weekly chart and and this is what I you know tell you guys. You really want to be looking at the weekly and the daily. The weekly and the daily give you much more clarity than the than the shorter time frames. And I honestly, as far as this space goes, I don't like to look at anything uh, less than the weekly and the daily. Anyways. Um, Daily chart, you know, definitely looks looks a little more ugly, but this is this is just what we see all the time. We see we see these big run ups and then we see these big dumps. It's it's just how it is right now, and uh, you know, 
we, we had a pretty euphoric rise from 34 cents up to 206, I believe. Yeah, 205. That was in an extremely short period of time. A lot of it was based, you know, this run up was based upon the, the Coinbase listing rumors. And uh, all that stuff stays, stays intact. So, yeah, that's, that's my take on ZRX. I'm continuing to buy more. Same with XRP. Um, GNT. Probably not going to add much more to. Um, got in at a pretty good price on that. I like what we've got with that. Probably going to leave that one. Um, but ZRX as well. Got quite a bit on that. Um, in at a pretty decent price on that one as well. Um, I'm going to going to continue to just keep buying XRP, and uh, as long as it stays stays as low as it is, I'm going to going to continue to keep buying it. Um, Yeah, we can take a look at Tron. Yeah, so uh, let's see if we can get a bit longer. Doesn't get as much data. Okay. So here's the drawn Bitcoin chart um, on Binance. kind of resting on that trend line right now. Um, again, compared to Bitcoin, Tron is getting stronger than Bitcoin. It's making making higher lows. Um, I'm not a big fan of Tron. Uh, doesn't mean it's not going to deliver or be a project that they say they do but I'm very skeptical. They're, they're kind of known as the hype machine and um, their, their uh, marketing is second to none. If they get, if they achieve what they are setting out to do, I think they could, uh, I, I don't think they will be big. Um, you know, the one thing uh, is, you know, with this, Justin's son has, you know, Jack Ma in his back pocket. Um, you know, talks of Tron being being in an Alibaba partnership, which would be absolutely monstrous. Um, again, it's speculation. That's his mentor. I, I wouldn't have any reason to think that that wouldn't happen um, if they deliver on, on what it is that they are setting out to do. But uh, again, you know, it's another one that when, when this run kicks in and, and everything gets going, um, We'll probably see a massive euphoric rise like we did, you know, this last time in December. Um, I think most of this stuff is going to do that, honestly, in this in this next run up. Um, I think it'll probably be the last time. I think uh, after the next run up, you're actually going to have to have a working product and you're going to have to be doing what you said you were going to do or uh, or a lot of these are going to cease to exist. Um, but as far as a technical standpoint, um, you know, we do have a 200 EMA on this and uh, we're above it right now. Um, eight, we're still below the eight and the 18 without a crossover, but we are, we are holding, holding against BTC. So the Tron Bitcoin chart looks much better than the Bitcoin USD. The Tron USD chart against the dollar looks, looks pretty ugly. You know, we had this, we had this bottom here, and, and we've got, um, you know, pretty good level of support here. It's bounced off quite a few times. Um, you know, this run up here, 
this was you know before the the main net launch this is everybody buying in before the the main net launch since then we've done nothing but sell off you know it doesn't it doesn't look very good against the dollar um, I myself am, am just not a huge fan of this prod project so I'm not gonna be buying this are, are you in this right now are you looking to get in or are you holding it Is it for Son or Frisian? Are, are you in this trade right now? Are you looking to get in? Uh, he's not responding. You know, anyways, it if Bitcoin drops, this is definitely going to dump. Um, I I would like to see some some structure damage before getting into this you know i'd like to see a trend line break or a new higher high um you know get above the eight let the eight cross over the 18 you know make a new high you know look to get in on a break here maybe six cents if you're a long-term believer of this and um you know looking to just accumulate for the long term you know you're definitely you're definitely getting some getting some bargain prices this thing peaked out in the 30s you know we're sitting at four cents right now this has been just absolutely decimated a lot like xrp um, against the dollar you know not not much here from a technical standpoint as far as a trader goes that i would that i'd want to be in this but um if it's a long-term hold for you and a project that you believe in i'd definitely be accumulating down here we're we're definitely closer to a bottom than we are a top and that's you know, that's what I keep telling people in the group, you know, any one of these charts you look at, we are much closer to a bottom than we are a top. And when this thing kicks off, when it does go, we will see volume surge, we'll see massive impulse move. You know, it's it's going to happen quickly when it does. I just don't think I don't think we're low enough yet for it to happen. So for me, not much has changed. Um, if, if anybody doesn't have any other questions um, for, for the longer term investors or the people that are in this more for the long term, you know, we've got we've got some great prices for accumulation. So just be patient. Um, I, I definitely want to see some some higher highs made some structural damage um, before I'm getting in on the on the long side. If I'm if I'm trading this, it's ugly. It'll get better. You know, I've got this circle marked out here. Um, you know, this is our main, main, main long-term trend line. Started back in March of last year. You know, I think I think we'll get a bounce there. I really do. I think this is potentially where we'll get our bounce. Um, I don't think we'd come down to this trend line, but anything is possible. You know, down there though, we're we are definitely running a, a big negative um, on the mining side. So I would find it hard to believe that that we get down here. But um, again, when it happens, when when capitulation and panic sets in, which when if we break below six thousand here, you're going to see it. Uh, but I also expect we're going to have some massive volume up here, and I, I expect we can see a see a quick quick move the other way. So, um, anyways, if, if anybody has any more questions, I'll uh, answer them to the best of my abilities. Otherwise, from uh, from a trading aspect, just be patient. I, I expect we're gonna. I will not be shocked to see us start to break down through the night here, or at uh, during the U.S. session. Um, tomorrow. I will talk to Scott. We have uh, been talking about possibly uh, expanding crypt Cryptogasmic here, but getting into getting into some Forex stuff. Um, I also trade Forex. <clears throat> I've been doing that for, for close to three, yeah, about three years now. 
Um, we've had some interest and some people wanting to, to learn some stuff on Forex. That's more of the stuff I'm trading, um, you know, on an active basis. The, the crypto I'm coming from, from a longer term investor standpoint. Um, so if anybody's interested, you can uh, definitely write on the on the crypto group or, or you can uh, message us in the Telegram group if that's something you want to get involved in. Um, I'm going to talk to Scott here this week and uh, we'll probably actually just set up a separate separate chat uh, for that. And uh, yeah, I'd love to love to show people what I'm learning on learning on the Forex as well as what I already know now. And uh, yeah, it's. We're, we're all in this to make money and, and uh, create some longevity, some long-term wealth, increase our income. Um, and there's, there's several ways to do that, uh, you know, outside of just the crypto space. You know, Forex for me is, um, I'm, I'm, I've got some strategies and developed some stuff for my mentor that, that uh, he's, he's taught me and as well as I'm working on some other stuff. And it's stuff I can, uh, I can replicate and, and do it like clockwork in a systematic way. And, uh, you know, for, for me, I know Scott, Scott's, uh, you know, Scott's brilliant with, with running online companies and basically running, running his career in life from a laptop anywhere in the world. And I think there's some interest for people, you know, on that stuff as, as well. You know, I think between, you know, Scott and I's goal here is to, to help people I'm investing in trading to, to live a life of, of freedom, uh, you know, time freedom. I want to be able to do the, do what I want, do it what, you know, when I want. And, uh, there, there's no greater way to do that than through the markets, trading and investing. And so for me, if, uh, if I can teach, teach all of you something else, you know, and diversify outside of crypto, um, that's something that I want to do. And I, and I know Scott is, uh, is definitely wanting to do that stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, if that's something you're interested in, just let us know. I'll talk to Scott this week, and uh, we'll definitely definitely get involved with that as well. So uh, thank you guys for, for your time tonight. Uh, I wish I had, had more positive news here, but um, it's coming. Just got to be patient. Uh, a lot of stuff on the horizon, my, my uh, targets and, and where I think the second half of the year is going to end up. That hasn't changed. I think a lot of that stuff is definitely definitely still intact and can happen this year. And uh, so anyways, appreciate you guys. Thanks, and we'll uh, catch you next time.